Welcome to Nugget 347 with Stephen Dana Groman. And you want to tell us where we're going today? Well, let's go to the Ohio Statehouse. We parked in the parking garage underneath the building. That was kind of interesting. And we found this sign as we got to ground level. The State House built 1838 to 1861. That's a long time. It took a long time. <laughs> a total of 15 commissioners, seven architects, and numberless artisans built this Grecian Dork State House of local limestone and brick from Indian Mound Clay at a cost of $1,359,121. Boy, they kept that down to the dollar. They <laughs> kept track, didn't they? Experts today marvel that so many diverse personalities could have produced what is nationally recognized as a pure and noble structure. A cornerstone was laid July 4th, 1839 in the northeast angle of the foundation. We took a fabulous tour. Our tour guide was great. I think this is one of the he did a good you job. enjoyed the most. He did a good job. And I do want to mention that we have been to 28 state capitals. That's all? It seems like we should be at more. <laughs> it does. You feel like I've dragged you to 128, don't you? Well, at least. <laughs> but they're all unique, aren't they? Yes, they are. There is kind of one thing that does pop up quite often and that's Vermont marble and that yep. will be showing up today in this nugget and the next nugget also. In the near future we're going to be visiting the Connecticut Massachusetts and Mississippi capitals. We're missing 19 of them so we've got our work cut out for us. We have been to every state capital that's the city except for Hawaii's. So hmm. we've done 49 state capitals. That's pretty cool. We just cool. haven't been able to visit all of the capitals, beginning with our tour in the basement. Which used to be a, a drive through garage, right? Yeah, they parked cars down there. They it, drove through it, yeah. It was a mess, but they closed it in, and they've done a fabulous job. They did job. a wonderful job. Lots of historic information, and we're not going to get into the historicity of the building today because that's not our point. We did find this limestone block in one of the displays. It says the capital was built of limestone stone brought from Sullivan's Quarry on the Scioto River in Franklin County. A small gauge railway built expressly for the construction project and paid for with state monies delivered the stone to the construction site. Convict labor was used in laying the foundations and exterior walls of the building. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, huh? I think that was a good idea. There's still, to some degree, the same kind of thing still happens. Like, for instance, the Border Patrol, they use prisoners to make police cars out of their cars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. You want to tell them what they do? No, you're just going to leave everybody hanging? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, they take their Tahoes that are the soccer well, yeah. mom mobiles, and they take them to That's the... That's what they call them, soccer mom mobiles. Well, they're not the only ones that call them well, Tahoes. I know, but, I mean, but we but have they, a Tahoe. They, but... They're the ones that call them that. You're not just saying it. No, no, I'm just not making that up. Anyway, they take them to the federal prison in El Paso, and they put guards all across the bottom, plates, and yeah. the prisoners do make that. They take to, the scoop off the front. To modify it so that it can handle the abuse that these guys have to go through with these vehicles. They do the lights and everything else too. Back to the state house. They had this beautiful booklet. I was excited when I found out it was free. It's a guide to the fossils of the Ohio Capitol on the acknowledgments that acknowledge Dale Nidovec. He is the curator of the Orton Geological Museum who has led the state house fossil tour for many years. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is if you haven't watched Nuggets 345 and 345 46, we took you to the Orton Geological Museum at the Ohio State University campus. So if you haven't seen those, go back and watch those. Well, let's talk about the Crown Point Limestone and the Columbus Limestone. The thing that's interesting to me about the Columbus Limestone and all the fossils that are in the wall there, they're all marine life fossils. But we're in Ohio, right? Yeah, but Is it that was, beachfront? No, it was flood. Oh, you think maybe Noah's flood would account for that. It is interesting because in the textbooks, they always say uh, a shallow inland sea was here and there and here and there. They never say how it got there and they never say where it went. <laughs> It just, they say it used to be there. Well, they have to say something because it's marine life fossils. Fascinating evidence of Noah's flood. The Crown Point limestone fossils is from Vermont, and those included sea snails and cephalopods and sea lilies. And then the Columbus limestone had trilobites, sea snails, and bivalves and brachiopods. I kept back taking pictures as often as I could, but I really wanted to hear what the guide was telling us about the history of the structure. So maybe one day we'll take this self-guided fossil 
fossil tour. We just didn't have time. We were able to get some fabulous pictures of fossils in the walls during our tour. The halls of the Ohio State House are lined with portraits of governors and artifacts of Ohio history, but the walls of the State House tell an older story from Ohio's prehistoric past. Hmm. Now we know there's no such word as prehistoric, right? No, that's a made up word. And you can learn about that in Words Mean Things. Our lesson. Words mean things. These walls were hewn from Columbus limestone, a rock formation underlying the Capitol and the source for the State House exterior walls, towering columns, iconic rotunda, and broad entrance stairs. This local building stone has weathered the elements admirably since completion of the current State House in 1861. Okay, first problem, the next sentence. The Columbus limestone is ancient, having formed about 390 to 405 million years ago during the Devonian period, and it's full of fossils. Few buildings in the world exhibit the variety or abundance of fossils of the Ohio State House. I believe that. Did you notice something? So it can last 150 years and everybody gets excited, but it's hundreds of millions of years old. Is that right? Yeah, go figure. Well, that makes total sense to somebody. <laughs> I guess the writer of the book. In the guide, they show you where you can specifically find certain fossils that they've focused on. And one of them is this fossil brachiopod in the Carthage marble limestone tile representing Harrison County in the large county map of Ohio located in the floor of the map room. This is where we started the tour. They have to present this guy, don't they? The they, geologic column right there in the book. Part of it, at least, they talk about yeah. when the dinosaurs first appeared in the Permian, the carbonate. Where'd they come from? They talk about how the, the Carthage marble was in the Carboniferous period and the Columbus limestone was in the Devonian period and the Crown Point limestone was in the Ordovician period. No proof. We have the mechanism. It's Noah's flood that would have laid all of these things out in less than a year. It would have laid it out rapidly. Columbus limestone was used exclusively for the exterior walls of the Capitol building. Limestones are primarily calcium carbonate and for the Columbus limestone, much of that consists of tiny particles of fragmented calcareous algae, plus fossil shells or skeletons secreted by animals. The two fossiliferous, or fossil-bearing rocks, used extensively at the Capitol are the Columbus limestone and the Crown Point limestone, a grade of black limestone used as a floor tile. A third fossiliferous limestone, Carthage marble, was used on the Ohio County map in the map room, as I previously mentioned. The primary building stone for the capital, this Columbus limestone, is also a world-class fossil deposit. The Columbus limestone was deposited mostly in, a, get this, a warm, clear, shallow, and sunny inland sea during the early to middle Devonian. Now, that's what you were just mm. mentioning. They're, yeah. they're inland seas. They have to have. It sounds like a tropical pre-flood environment to me. At that time, the area that is now Ohio was in a tropical to subtropical latitude south of Earth's equator. Here they go with the Pangaea <laughs> thing, which we mentioned in the previous nuggets. They have to have Pangaea because they need to move the continents towards the equator to allow for the vegetation and the life that would occur, obviously, in tropical and subtropical environments. If God said he made everything and it never rained before the flood, it was a tropical environment everywhere. And I think this is a good place to park it. We will pick up in the next nugget and show you more and talk a little bit more about the specific fossils and show you some of that beautiful floor tile. Thank you. 